Hello, I am Matt Seuss, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Topaz Denoise AI, and I'm going to show you how to use this inside of Lightroom, inside of Photoshop, and also as a standalone. And this is actually a sneak peek into my Mastering the Digital Darkroom. It's an online monthly membership where I teach photographers how to master the, the digital darkroom using different programs such as Lightroom, such as Topaz, such as DxO. Uh, just so happens that this month, the month of March, the, the monthly theme is denoising and sharpening images. So the people that are in this monthly program, they get this for free. You're taking a look at this for free too, because I want to show you it and spread the word about my Mastering the Digital Darkroom. Go ahead, take a look down below. I'll have a link for the Mastering the Digital Darkroom if you want to subscribe and get more of this content delivered to you. Is there, there's a community in there too. I have monthly coaching calls as well with me to help you guys master the digital darkroom. So go ahead and check out those links. I also have a link for Topaz down below too with a discount code. So let's go ahead right now and take a look at this video that again appears in this month's Mastering the Digital Darkroom. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Topaz Denoise AI, and we'll be taking a look at it as a standalone program, working with Lightroom, and also as a plugin inside of Photoshop. And we're going to be using this RAM photo that we used in the DxO Pure Raw uh, video, and we'll compare the results too. So let's get started. Now, this is the RAW file inside of uh, Lightroom. No adjustments have been made at all or anything like that. But what I want to do first is show you the standalone version. And the standalone version, you can go ahead and click on this button here to browse images, or it also works really good with drag and drop. And so I have a second monitor over here. I'm just going to drag my raw file over here into the program and we're looking at the uh, at DxO from that raw file. Now one thing that's important to note is just how dark it looks compared to our Lightroom version and this goes along the lines with the demosaicing that Topaz is doing on raw files and it has its own algorithms and its own way of dealing with the raw files. We can see here that we are in the raw mode for the denoise program and that should be giving us the best results in terms of denoising but at the expense of it darkening and, and looking a little bit crazy. So normally I'm a big fan of working with the files in the raw format, but because the demosaicing doesn't look great on a whole bunch of different photos, sometimes it looks good. Other times, like in this sense here, it's just way too dark. I actually prefer to use a TIFF file instead of the raw file. So that means we'll be doing a little bit of processing in Lightroom and then we'll send it over to Topaz Denoise. So I'm gonna quit out of here so that we don't have that file in the background. And let's go back to our library inside of Lightroom. And what I'm gonna do here first is just click on develop. And all I'm gonna do just real simple, I'll just click on auto, brightens it up, gives some nice uh, texture and tone to the image, and even increase the vibrance and saturation that auto did. So a nice quick little shortcut to get this looking pretty decent. If we zoom in here, we definitely have a bit of noise. This was a 3200 ISO shot. And I have the sharpening at the default in Lightroom and the noise reduction is turned off. We'll take a look at noise reduction in a little bit here inside of Lightroom. But let's go back to the library. Now the way to get this into Topaz uh, Denoise, if you right click on the image, now remember when we were in, uh, in Top uh, I'm sorry, uh, DxO, we went down to export and, uh, oops, there it is, export, and then we went to uh, DxO Pure Raw. We don't have an option of going to uh, mask uh, Topaz Denoise in here. So what we have to do instead is go edit in, and then we'll find Topaz, uh, where is it, Denoise AI right over here. So just a little bit different way of sending this file over. Now, this won't send the raw file over. What it'll do is edit a copy. And if you want to open up the copy file options down below, I always make sure I'm using a TIFF. So there's no compression on that file. And I have compression turned off on the bottom as opposed to zip compression. I'm also going to, I prefer to use the Adobe RGB 98 uh, color profile. Some may dis, uh, like using the sRGB or the Profoto RGB, but I stick in the Adobe RGB 
uh, color space. Bit depth, I think it's really important to keep that at 16 bits as opposed to eight. Uh, it's double the file size, but double the data. And when you're dealing with noise, if you're working in an eight bit environment, you might end up seeing some banding in the smoother areas. Uh, 16 bit should definitely help with that. And resolution really doesn't matter here. It's not going to affect the file size at all. This is really just for printing. So you can leave it default at, th at 300. If it was at 72, again, it's still not going to change your, your file size at all. But go ahead and, you know, if you want to go ahead and click 300 in there. When you click on edit, it'll make a copy of that. It'll make that TIFF and you should be able to see it right in next to your other file here. And we saw that just for a quick second and then it instantly brought it over to Topaz Denoise. And let's go ahead and take a look here. We have the noise noiseless version on the right hand side and the original version on the left hand side. Up on top here, uh, you the, with this little lightning bolt you can turn that off or on by turning it on it's going to let the ai do its magic and try and figure out which setting to use between standard clear low light severe noise or raw and what i like to do is look around the image especially in smooth tones to make sure nothing weird is going on visually every once in a while you'll see some weirdness going on. So I'll take a look here and I can see there's a little bit of pixelation maybe on the little hair whisk whiskers here, not too bad. What I'm trying to make sure I don't see is any weird noise and no noise in this background area there. Uh, we could take a look at clear, see how that looks. Uh, whiskers actually look a little bit better. You're not seeing that noise in between them. If we take a look at low light, now see, I don't know if you noticed that, but just underneath the chin, it looks like there, or not, not the chin, but the throat, it looks like there's a little bit of weirdness going on underneath here. Also a little bit of weirdness as well on the, uh, on the lower lip, the chin area over there. So I wouldn't want to use low light, severe noise. Um, I don't know. Does it qualify for severe noise? Let's take a look around. Let's see if anything strange is going on. That actually kind of looks kind of like clear. We wouldn't necessarily want to use raw in here because this isn't a raw file. And it even gives us a question mark over here saying, hey, that's not a raw file and it's not really doing any noise reduction. So it's really a matter of going between severe noise or standard. And the whiskers do look a little sharper. Again, there is just a little bit of pixelation in there. So I think I might stick with the, uh, with the severe noise. Let me just double check here again making sure I still have some detail up in here. I can now go down below here and we have model preferences. I can turn this on to have it automatically detect the correct settings. And I didn't see those numbers beforehand, so I don't know if they changed at all or not before that. But if you find that it's not doing enough noise or if it's doing too, too much noise, you can increase the amount of noise removal or decrease the amount of noise removal. And I think I'll back off on it just a hair uh, edge sharp or enhanced sharpness. We can go ahead and bring up some sharpness here and it looks like it's doing okay. I'm actually going to use uh, Topaz Sharpen AI after I do this uh, in the denoise. So I'm not too worried about getting the enhanced sharpness 100% perfect. And then in the post-processing recover original detail, I usually like to have that up pretty high. It's not a very sensitive slider. So if you turn this down, and turn this up all the way. Uh, I think there's a little bit of enhanced um, detail that's being brought out. Color noise reduction, I don't have to worry about this photo, but if you had a dark image, you might see more color noise. So if it didn't remove all the color noise initially, you can increase this slider to, uh, to remove that color noise. And when you are making adjustments, th they have improved the speed on this a lot, but it really depends on your computer. So if you make an adjustment and you don't see anything that's going on here, make sure you take a look down in the very bottom corner. Uh, you'll see this little green bar there. Whenever you adjust something, you'll see that uh, little lever slider there. It was blue first and then it went to green. So it has to do a little bit of adjustments there. Uh, so if you don't see the adjustments right away, make sure you, that the down in the lower right hand corner, you see the progress bar, wait until it's fully green. Now by me changing out of there, I'm not sure if I ended up changing the settings again, uh, but uh, you know, this photo isn't looking all that bad. 
And I'll just take a cruise around this photo, just seeing if there's anything weird going on. And it doesn't seem like it. This looks like it's doing a pretty good job removing the noise, keeping some sharpness in here. And again, we'll recover some of that sharpness a little bit later. And I'm really happy with that. So I'm gonna just go ahead and click on apply. And now what it's going to do is apply this denoising and it's gonna save it right in that same TIFF file. So it'll just rewrite over that TIFF file that we created in Lightroom. And here we are in Lightroom. And if we zoom in on here, we can see that the noise has been removed. Looks really good, especially compared to, let's go ahead and select this one here. Take a look at both of them side by side. And I did not grab the right one. Let me go ahead and reselect those. So that would have been this photo here, that DNG that we saw that was from uh, DxO. So we'll select this one here and this one here, take a look at both of them and we'll zoom right in. And of course, look at the difference here. So. DxO, or I'm sorry, uh, Topaz did a really great job on that. We got some sharpness that we have to bring back in. Again, we'll do that in a little bit later. But what happens if we end up just using Lightroom? I and mean, can we mimic those settings in Lightroom? If we take a look here, I got that raw file. If we go into develop, zoom in on this, and start introducing noise reduction in Lightroom. We're starting to get rid of the noise in the background for sure. There's still some more noise, but look at the detail that we've lost in the Ram's face. Uh, we can try and bring back some of that detail by increasing the detail slider. It's bringing it back a little bit. Uh, still nowhere near as smooth as the Topaz version. We can try increasing the sharpening a little bit too. Uh, but we still have that noise. I mean, this isn't looking too bad. We've lost some of the detail in the face for sure. If we go back to our library and now compare both of these two to see them side by side. Here we are, we have the, uh, the Topaz version, the TIFF on the right hand side and it looks a heck of a lot better. I mean, we do have more detail in the face noise is completely smooth in the background there. We still see some noise over here. And to me, I mean, it just doesn't look as crisp. It's close, but not as crisp. So we're definitely getting a lot better results with the uh, with Topaz. And I mentioned we'll compare it to the D-Prime. Let's go ahead and just open up D-Prime. Now D-Prime, this was the DNG that came out of there. Let me just go into develop and I'm just gonna click on auto just like we did last time. Uh, with the just the original raw file just keep it on auto and let's go back to our library and let's go ahead and compare deep prime to the tiff file that was done in topaz and color wise um actually looks a little bit better um i don't know maybe slightly a little bit better on that tiff file but uh this file here isn't a really good choice to use to uh, really determine color. I'd want to see a sunset color to see which one's doing better color. And if we take a look inside here, now the D prime did do some noise reduction um, and also some sharpening too. And we can see that there is a little bit of noise in the background, but the sharpness is so much more improved on the D prime and compare that to the, uh, to the TIFF file that again, only went through the denoise, but we haven't sharpened it yet. Uh, we do have better noise so far in, uh, in Topaz, but we're gonna take a look at that again in the next video when I talk about Topaz Sharpen AI and we'll be sharpening this image. So let's hold off our final judgments as to who's gonna be the winner, Topaz or DxO for a little bit later. Now, okay, now we're gonna take a look at sending this over to Photoshop. Now I already have a TIFF file in here. Uh, I color coded this green so that we know that this was from Topaz Denoise. We can go ahead and see here, this was the denoised version that the TIFF file that we did. Um, you, you could potentially run into some problems here because what we're gonna be doing here, if you already have a TIFF file, we're gonna be right clicking on this and clicking on edit in and Photoshop is on the top here. And what it's going to do is open it up and it's gonna keep that same name here. Uh, we gotta be careful that we're not gonna overwrite that file. So let's go ahead first and we'll go ahead and edit in Photoshop, open that up and it's gonna send that TIFF file over. And it actually is sending over the one that has all the noise on it.
So we have the file with all the noise and we can come on over here and see that we do not have another copy of that. Remember how when we right clicked on it and sent it to Topaz Denoise, it made that copy and we saw it right there before it went into the plugin. Uh, but it didn't do that in Photoshop and we'll see what happens with that. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go under filter, Topaz Labs and Denoise AI. And we're gonna open that up and I'm just gonna go with the quick default settings here. So I'm not gonna do any adjustments. I already showed you how to do that. What you do is you click on apply down in the lower right hand corner. It's gonna apply those adjustments and we will see the denoised version in Photoshop in just a second. And here it is now inside of Photoshop. And if we go ahead and go into Lightroom, again, we haven't saved anything, so nothing has changed here yet. Now, one other thing I'm gonna do here too, and I'm just going to completely desaturate this just so that we can see a different version as it appears in uh, inside of Lightroom. Now, a couple things here. If I go ahead and click on File and Save, let's go ahead and take a look at what happens. File, Save, let's go to Lightroom and instantly it did actually make another version here and we can see that. So this is the one that we just did inside of Light, uh, inside of uh, Photoshop. So all you have to do in Photoshop, again, just click on file and save and it'll save it right into your Lightroom Classic Library. Won't overwrite that other file. Now, generally, I mentioned before that I don't like keeping TIFFs inside my Lightroom catalog. So normally what I would end up doing in terms of workflow is just selecting that raw file and I'll do file and export. And then in the export, I'll go ahead and say exactly where I want to export it to the file settings. Uh, what I'll do is select TIFF and here we are, no compression, change that to Adobe 16 bits and won't resize it at all or anything like that. And then I'll click on export again, making sure I have my export location where I want to save it to. And that'll be saved outside of my catalogs. Remember, I don't use my catalog for TIFFs and, and things like that. So that's where I would then export that. And then what I would end up doing is just go over into Photoshop. We won't have any RAM photo in there. So what I'll do is then go into file and open, then navigate where that TIFF file was open up the TIFF file, and then we're back in Photoshop, just like before. And what I would end up doing is applying the denoise, then do a file and save as, or just overwrite that original TIFF file and save it to that extra, the work in progress folder that I normally use, the exports folder. Uh, I talked about that in my workflow, how I keep those separate. So that's how I personally end up doing that, not sending it from Lightroom directly like that on the right click edit in Photoshop, but again, exporting it and then opening it up in Photoshop individually. So that's using Topaz Denoise. We'll be taking a look at Topaz Sharpen AI in the next video.